anybody under 18, a, a minor cannot consent to sex, especially mm. not sex for money. Wow. So again, against the law. It involves the act of recruiting, transporting, transferring, harboring, and receiving a person through the use of force, fraud, or coercion as the means, and for the purpose of exploitation. So you got three things we're talking, the act, the means, and the purpose. Since every year thousands of men, women, and children fall into the hands of traffickers in their own countries and abroad. And so we're not just talking about what's happening over there, we're talking about what's happening right here. Hmm. Right here in Michigan. And again, it's hard to imagine that what might be going on next door or what people in your congregation might be dealing with or people right on your uh -huh. campus or right in your community hmm. might be hmm. dealing with. You know, one of the, the stories that eventually came out was uh, uh, about Teresa Flores, and many of you may have heard about her. And again, right here in the suburbs of Michigan, nobody would ever suspect going to school by day and being trafficked by night. Mm -hmm. And again, mm -hmm. right here, right underneath our noses. And so a lot of what we talk about through the Michigan Rescue and Restore Coalition is look beneath the surface. Don't just see what's obvious, but begin to really look at things and right. pay attention to it so that we don't miss what's right in front of us. So we talk about every country in the world is affected by traffic, and every country is a point of origin and or destination. It's happening everywhere. So again, we talk about the act. It's recruitment, transport, transfer, and harboring, or receipt of a person. Then the means, whether it's threat of coercion, abduction, people being snatched off the street. You have a lot of that going on, especially in our major cities and crowded cities. You even see it in the movies sometimes where there are people right outside in a, in a van or drive by and literally reach and just grab a person right off the street right in front of everybody. And so it's, again, not this undercover operation where nobody's aware that it's going on. It's like this, this is, in the blink of an eye, the person's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, we were watching a video recently, and it's a video of how to protect yourself when you're on the streets. And they have a group of young people at one bus stop, and then another person at the other bus stop. They can see each other literally across the street from each other. Van pulls up and grabs a young girl, and she is kicking and screaming, help, help, stop, stop, stop. People across the way don't even notice anything is going on. Yeah, again, right in front of us. And traffickers are aware that we are not paying attention. Mm, we don't want to get involved. Yeah. We don't want to say we had anything to do with it. We don't want to get sued later by the person. So we kind of just turn a blind eye and look the other way. So we're talking coercion, abduction, through fraud, through deception, through abuse of power of those who are vulnerable, through giving payments or promising of benefits. Then for the purpose of exploitation, whether that's prostitution, uh, sexual exploitation, through uh, forced labor, through um, uh, slave and sweatshops, also for removal of organs. And again, you don't hear a lot about that, but people are trafficked for body parts. You know, you need somebody needs a spleen in another country or a heart over there or lungs over there. And so people are trafficked for body parts. And so again, these are the purposes of trafficking. Just some basic terminology I want to walk you through. Again, talking about a child. Again, any person under the age of 18. Coercion, a threat against a person and or someone they love. And so it may be that I haven't threatened to do anything to you, but I have pictures of your baby or pictures of your little brother or your little sister or pictures of your parents and I threaten to hurt them if something happens, uh, if you don't comply with what I'm telling you to do. And so again, it's that coercion. And or debt bondage. Debt bondage is that sense of you owe me in the situation of this young girl I was telling you about. Because of all the money I've spent, you now have to pay me back. You know, I remember when we were first working in Italy, one of the young girls we met, she must have been like 14 or 15 or something, and we actually went out with the group who worked the streets and went to minister to these young girls. And so we're out there, and I'm asking her, how long have you been here? And I meant um, on the street, and, and she says two weeks. And she's talking about in the country. She had been brought from Nigeria to Italy to be on the streets. And, and then I'm telling her that I'm a missionary there to help out, to kind of come minister to the girls. She breaks into these big crocodile tears, and she says, I didn't think anybody knew where I was or that anybody could find me. I don't even really know where I am. Mm -hmm. They dropped me yeah. off here yeah. and said that I owe them. Mm -hmm. And when she came, she was promised a better job, a better life. She was going to be able to make money to help her family, to send money back home. And she says once they got there, they took all of her information and says, you owe us for the plane ride. You owe us for your clothes. You owe us for where you're staying. 
And so even the money she's making is not her money. Nope. She's paying back this debt bondage. It's the sense of, I owe you because of. Then you have the issue of force against that violence, the beating, the kicking, those kinds of things, having a knife at your throat, a gun at your head. Um, it's that harbor of moving a person from place to place. Uh, sex tourism, where people actually pay to come have sex with people. You know, it, it used to be people went on vacation, they were going to maybe have a little fling or try to hook up with somebody in a place where nobody could see them and nobody knew. Well, at this point, there's a camera everywhere. So before you finish doing whatever you're doing, somebody's going to know about it. And there's somebody on the back side of that who's making money on what you think might be harmless fun. And so it's no longer harmless. Mm -hmm. um, then the idea that sex trafficking is slavery, goes to slave trafficking, and then even street children are being trafficked. And so every little child is not out there because he's hungry and poor. It may be that the person broke their leg and sent them to the street and so they look pitiful as a little panhandler. And they go back home not to feed their poor hungry family, but to give some trafficker, some pimp, some madam the money till they go back out the next day. So we talk about trafficking. There's a difference between adult trafficking and child trafficking. Um, clear definition in terms of what's a minor, 18 above or above. The criteria for sex trafficking of adults stipulates either the use of force, fraud, or coercion, but there's no such stipulation for minors. By virtue of the fact that the person is under 18, it's illegal. So it can't be, oh, they agreed. Oh, I thought it was consensual. Minors cannot consent to sex work against the law, okay? And the law clearly states that. Why, why are people trafficked? We'll talk about the many reasons, you know, and definitely vulnerability is a key reason. And you think about our children who are innocent, who are vulnerable, and, you know, we're thinking that they're out playing hopscotch or jump rope or jacks or ball, and, and they're out where people are on the streets watching them and watching their behavior and watching their movements and seeing who's at home in the evening and when are they most vulnerable and when can they be the best target. Hmm. So we talk about issues like poverty, war, natural disasters. All of those are things that make people vulnerable. Think about the situation in Haiti recently. You know, the earthquake, the outbreak of cholera, the flooding, the crowded situations in the tents, everybody needing something, anything, a handout because they don't have anything. High vulnerability. Yes. High vulnerability. And so I remember when we first went there, we were talking to some of the young girls there. And, you know, we're thinking it's a group of little innocent virgin girls. We're trying to do sex education and talking about abstinence. And, and one of the girls asked the question, she says, well, does it count if you had to eat? And I'm thinking, wow. what are you talking about? You know, and again, you hear that and you're thinking, you mm -hmm. don't want to believe they mean what they mean. And she says, well, the guy gave me food to have sex with him. Does that count? And so now you hate to tell her that she's no longer a virgin because by definition, you know, she's had sex. But in her mind, I didn't do it because I wanted to be having sex. I did it because I was hungry. Survival. Survival. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and, and so you get situations like that where people are vulnerable. So as in many parts of the world, it's thought that educating boys is more important than educating girls. And so because girls don't receive education, they're most vulnerable. They say that India is the worst place to be born a girl. Because the likelihood of survival is very, very low. And the torture that you go through is very, very high. And it's likely that over half of the girls will end up on the streets. Mm. It's the worst place in the world to be born a girl. So victims are also groomed by people who are pretending to be boyfriends and girlfriends. Mm -hmm. People who you think like you and love you and are looking out for you, you're being groomed by them. And so again, that makes you very vulnerable. Traffickers are motivated by money. So when you think about the fact that this is a lucrative trade, a lucrative industry for somebody, how many times can you use an illegal bullet? You shoot it once. How many times can you inject illegal drugs? You shoot up once with the drug. How many times can you sell a 13-year-old girl? Over and over mm -hmm. and over and over, all day, all night, all week, all year, over and over, as long as she's alive. People can be resold many times, making trafficking very profitable. Mm -hmm. So when you think about trafficking, where do all these different people go? If you picture a pie, as 100%, about 46% of them end up in prostitution. And so here's this person who's been coerced, who's uh, fought to fraud or deception, been abducted. They end up on the streets, they end up in the brothels, they end up in the strip clubs, in, uh, clubs the massage parlors, so prostitution. But then another 27% domestic servitude. And so that may be the, the nannies, the uh, pairs, the, the housekeepers and cleaners, 
those who are working in the hotels for no money, uh, those who are working in uh, the factories, which is that 3% or 5% uh, that sweatshop kind of picture, the agriculture, those who are out doing farming. And so when you talk about trafficking, it's, it's sex, but it's also labor. And they're going in all these different directions. And then it's that 12% where they don't really know where they're going. And so these numbers could all fluctuate depending on what you're looking at. When you think about the pie, it's one thing. But when you think about the faces of people, it's different. Mm. You know, so when you say, okay, out of 100, it's not 46%, but it's 46 people. You know, it's not 5%, it's five people. It's five faces. It's five somebody's mother, father, sister, brother, child, friend, cousin, aunt, uncle, nephew. And see, when we're talking out there, it's so easy to just ignore it. You know, we turn the TV off, we turn the channel, we do something different. But imagine if somebody you know, you keep talking about it. Because you gotta find that person, you gotta get them off the street, you gotta get them back. You know, and it's such a travesty when you think about our kids who run away. Uh, our children are most vulnerable as runaways in the first 24 to 48 hours. How long does a child have to be missing before the police will look for them? Minimum 24 hours. They will not look for you in less than 24 hours. Hmm. And so 24 hours later, you can be in any number of places. You talk about face and reality. We were doing a presentation at our church camp. And we were using the uh, pronoun she. Okay. And afterwards, um, a man from our congregation walked up and said, you, you need to use both genders. Yeah, absolutely. And I said, yeah, I'm aware of the fact. He said, no, I'm serious. He said, right now, we have a young man in our congregation that was labor trafficked. Mm -hmm. He lived locally, but he, he was trafficked and ended up in a western state. And two Mennonite ladies that wow. was, they was having a project done. Mm -hmm. She suspected they suspected something. They rescued him. My Praise point God. in Close saying this: one Sunday morning they were doing communion, and mm -hmm. we go forward. I saw this young man mm -hmm. trying to hold his communion cup, hmm. come past, and the term "like a scared rabbit" mm. does not even begin to describe him. He looked, he was like this, all hunkered over, yeah. afraid as he walked in the church. Mm -hmm. Well, the place of refuge. Hmm. Place of sanctity. Thank God for this man helped get him into rehab. Yeah. A few weeks ago, it was Communion Sunday, hmm. and this young man come by, and I did a double. Mm -hmm. And I went to the older man in the church, and I said, is this? Yeah. He said, yes. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe that How he got that? baptized. Yeah, he yeah. Got, he's been baptized since. Yeah. I was... But the vision of seeing this piece of humanity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that had been and it's, it's and like say, being this piece, one, one young man, imagine oh. the thousands and millions, mm -hmm. that 27 mm -hmm. million faces that. like that who may show up in somebody's congregation. And unless people are aware of this kind of information, you will see it and just wonder what's going on. You'll keep oh. on going. You won't look beneath the surface. Yes. Mm. You mentioned the 24 hours. Mm -hmm. That was uh, if someone runs away, the yeah. police won't do anything. Or if someone uh, disappears, I right. should say. They consider it a runaway maybe for 24 yeah. hours. Mm -hmm. Is that a Michigan? It's all uh, over. Because I, I have a friend whose daughter was abducted mm -hmm. um, and trafficked in Florida. Okay. And she, they, the police down there told her 72 hours. Yeah, wow. and, and, and so it's 24 were, to 48, so again, I said that by the time okay. people go look for them, they are so far gone. Oh, yes, they and, are. And, and if you remember, even in, in the movie, uh, Trafficked, with Liam Neeson mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the other people, Taken, yeah. Taken. Yeah. In, in that movie, think about it, he went to the police to say, my daughter is missing, mm -hmm. and they said, well, we're not looking for 48 hours or however long. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because of who he is and what he was able to do, the resources he had, he's on a plane, he's off, you know, mm -hmm. he has all these amazing Rambo kind of skills, he can go in and find it. Now, what's the likelihood of that? I mean, exactly. mm -hmm. I, I know I talked to one young lady, she says, you know, that is not my father. If something happens to me, don't call him. It's like calling a plumber. Exactly. <laughs> what, what is he going to do, really? He doesn't I mean, have those it, it skills. It drew awareness to it, but it was very unrealistic. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And so, again, we need to all be aware. So as we see anything right. suspicious, yes. we can report it. Because, again, this is a real person. So we're talking again about young people and our teens. What, what makes our teens so vulnerable? Teens got issues. <laughs> you know, it's just a, a lot of stuff that they have to deal with. It is hard being a teenager. 
It is just not an easy life for the teen. And so teenagers need somebody, anybody, a helpful somebody, a safe somebody, yes. who's willing to walk alongside them and help them until they mature mm -hmm. and until they grow up. And our young people are young till 30. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that now they're in college. Because again, remember, 18, college, mm -hmm. still naive, still very innocent, mm -hmm. especially those who grow up in safe Christian environments. That's true, yeah. Those kids are more vulnerable than the streetwise kids. Mm -hmm. At least the streetwise kids can look at you and say, you look shady, you look crooked. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the innocent church kids mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. they, they've been taught to love everybody, mm -hmm. to respect everybody, to welcome everybody, to help everybody. Yeah. You know, so again, we got to think through what are we oh, teaching, right. how are we teaching, and making sure that we're not making our children mm -hmm. pray, but keeping them safe. Our family issues make our kids vulnerable. Again, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about all of these, but technology mm -hmm. makes them vulnerable. The access to the internet, the fact that they, mm -hmm. we got gadget kids. You know, Mr. Gadget used to be a joke because he had so many mm -hmm. little compartments and so many little gadgets, but our kids are gadget oh, kids yeah. at this point. You know, they're friends. Friends are no longer innocent. That's true. You know, our, their friends can be exposed to so many things, and it makes our children susceptible. Uh, online dating mm -hmm. makes our kids vulnerable. The music, the lyrics, you know, sex, drugs, and violence over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And most kids have two sets of music. They have the parent-approved music and the friend-approved music. And because they're looking to fit in, they play with what their friends play when they're around their friends, and they mm -hmm. play what their parents want them to listen to when they're around their parents. Um, then you got your sexting and texting, you know, we'll talk more about that, pornography, strip clubs, prostitution. So again, all these things make our kids very, very vulnerable. So what are some of the teen issues? A uh, quote from Zig Ziglar, he says that kids go where there's excitement. Whatever the excitement mm -hmm. is, kids want to be around it, but they stay where they love. And that's why it's so important that kids have a sense of family, yes. a sense of community, where their needs for attention and affection, appreciation, affiliation are all being met. Because if not, then they, they're vulnerable to somebody else coming along and meeting those needs. Mm -hmm. So peer pressure. Friends force kids to do things. You know, and I try to tell my young people that I interact with is that a friend is somebody that will not compromise your values. So anybody who's trying to force you to do something that That's you feel good. uncomfortable about, that you know is wrong, that you don't like, cannot be termed a friend. Because a friend would not cause you to compromise your values. They just mm. won't. You know, so peer pressure, parental expectations. You know, parents have high, 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 high expectations of their young people. And yes, we want to raise the bar, but we don't want to make it unreachable. And so a lot of kids live with this sense that I'm disappointing my parents and I just never measure up and I'm not doing enough. Then they meet a predator who says, you know what, you, you're great. You, you're wonderful. You, you really are good enough. I like you the way you are. You can meet my expectations. And because they want to meet somebody's expectations, they, they're vulnerable. Body image, you know, the idea that every girl wants to be shaped like a, yeah. it used to be like a brick house, but now you got all these different people you want to be shaped like, whether it's <laughs> this person or that person or whoever, but, but, but they want the chest that's out to here and the bum that's out to there, and they're doing alterations mm -hmm. on their body parts again to have this look mm -hmm. that the magazine says is in. You know, it's just this thin, almost anorexic look when not most people don't look like that, and, and you can't convince them that the pictures have been airbrushed. Right. You know, in right. real life, this person doesn't even look like this. This is a right. shadow image of who they are. And because our young people have not had this sense of identity in Christ, they really don't know who they yeah. are in Him, mm -hmm. they're trying to be who the world says they should exactly. be. Mm -hmm. And so body mm -hmm. image is a major issue for our teens. Mm -hmm. The search for significance, again, the idea of being valuable, being important to somebody, uh, being something uh, of significance in terms of I matter. Everybody wants to matter to somebody. Parental conflict, if, if there's a lot of arguing at home, uh, lots of fights and feuds mm -hmm. at home, if you're worried about your parents might get divorced again, you want to be someplace stable. And even though the world of prostitution and trafficking is probably one of the most chaotic environments, there's this semblance of family. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all in this together. You know, you got your pimps, your madams, your wifeys, your kiddies, which are part of the terminology they use. The wifeys are the young girls that they send into the schools to recruit other young girls. And so again, everybody has a name, everybody's part of the fold, as they call it. Uh, work and play stress creates conflict for our young people. Doing homework, doing uh, chores around the house, just having so much to do and just not enough hours to try to balance what I want to do versus what I need to do, but I want to be with my friends, but I have to be at home, I have to do schoolwork. So it's this stress and this pressure trying to find this balanced lifestyle. Mm 
Again, making our kids vulnerable. Health issues, fear of failure, sex, drugs, trauma. Again, lots of stuff. Can you remember being a teen? Being a teen wasn't as hard when I was growing up. Right. I mean, you know, we had our challenges, but it just was not this compacted list of things. And they're just basic decision-making skills. Most of our children don't know how to reason. They don't know how to think past A and B. They don't know what A and B leads to C and D and E and L. They felt, well, I didn't realize. How did you not realize? You know, if you put something liquid in the refrigerator, it's going to, in the freezer, it's going to freeze. Well, how did you not know that if you put it on the stove, it's going to boil? Well, I just thought it would get warm. You know, what lesson did you miss? But again, they don't reason through not good decision-making school skills. But then even beyond all that, our teams are online. Technological society. So the World Wide Web is a wonderful thing in terms of resources and access and making us global citizens. But it also makes us global prey. Mm -hmm. And most yeah. of us have not had lessons on, on etiquette and safety issues online. And most parents are not aware what their young people are doing out there. So then teens have their own lingo and their own language. They, they, they've come up with these codes and ways of communicating with one another. The parents and educators and, and uh, pastors and leaders and communities know absolutely nothing about. Mm -hmm. It's what's very important that we're going to help protect our children that we learn their language. You, and they're not the first ones to have coded language. You know, all of us grew up with coded languages. But share, share some codes with you and see how many of these codes you can actually get. And I need to get my cheat sheet here because I know my language, but I don't know theirs. All right, so we have some young people and some older people in the room. So, uh, yet again, I, I, we're going to listen to them. <laughs> so, I, I, I'll give you some of the old school terminology. And again, most of us know what it is. Again, AKA, also known as ASAP, as soon as possible, ATM. Automatic teller machine. Come on, we go to the ATM. Okay, BTW. By the way, is the new terminology. BTW used to just mean between. It was an abbreviation for between. Okay, BYOB. Bring your own booze. Bring your own bills, bring your own Bible, bring your own Bible, depending on where you're going. <laughs> yeah. Where are going? See you L. See you later. Oh. That was for those people who were like the baby boomers. The only people who wasn't doing it. TTFN. TTFN, okay. Uh, then ETA, estimated time of arrival. Okay. DBA, do a business as. FAQ, frequently asked questions. FY, for your information. TMI, too much information. And WYSIWIG, what you see is what you get. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Most of us know those, we've heard them somewhere, but this is the new teen talk. So ABT, about. Just like BTW was between, just a shorter way of saying it. ABT, you, know, you only get so many characters when you're texting. And you know, when you're online doing instant messages, you ain't trying to take up all your space, you may get two or three lines, so you gotta be short and brief. ASL, now, give you a clue. We used to say, what's your ETA? Now people say, what's your ASL? ETA used to be, what's your estimated time of arrival? What's your ASL means, what's your age, your sex, and your location? Oh, my word. Oh, my word, wow. exactly. ATM used to be automatic teller machine, but your parents are ATMs now. So when a young person says ATM, they mean at this moment. So they'll say, what are you ATM? What are you doing at this moment? AYPI. And your point is? So if a person is going on and on, you send them back an AYPI, get to the point, which, and your point is? We used to say, give me your bottom line, okay? Uh, BTDT, it's a phrase that the older generation used, but they never abbreviated it. Been there, done that, okay? BTW, by the way, here's a good one, CD9. CD9 is a code nine parent standing by. Oh, so if you're getting ready to send me something crazy, don't send it right now. Code 9, parents standing by. CTS, change the subject. Okay. Again, all just a simple language. And again, it's a coded language, and coded languages are not new. We just don't know the encryption system for this language. All right. So CWOT, considered a waste of time. So they talking to you saying, you know, that's a CWOT. It's just a waste of time. CYO. But we used to do C-U-L, see you later. C-Y-O is see you online. So I can text you something and say, okay, I'm da -da -da, I see you online. It means meet me on the computer versus texting me. 
that. And it used to be when you met somebody online, you went to a chat room, you sent them a photo of yourself, maybe a video clip if you were high tech. But now with Skype, people can see you and everything you're doing. So that yeah. webcam has taken on a whole new meaning all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Okay, D-I-K-U. Do I know you? Now, why is it you're online asking somebody, do you know them? You should only be talking to people why? that you know. Exactly, but do I know you? H-S-W-M. Have sex with me. Whoa. Oh, mm -hmm. exactly. I-M-P. Something you don't want to have to tell anybody online. I might be pregnant. Oh, my W-T-G-P. Want to go private. So if we're in a public space where everybody can see what we're talking about, let's get off of Facebook general and go into Facebook private. Want to go private? Then W-Y-R-N, what's your real name? So again, if, if these are all my friends and I'm on Facebook and everybody has thousands of friends, I mean, how many of those people really can be your friend? And how many of those people do you actually really know? You know, I think about being on Facebook and, and, and I'm not, not the best Facebook person because people would send me friend requests and I would take forever, forever responding because I don't want to check out their friends, friends, friends. Because I discovered that once you let them in, everybody else they know gets in. Yeah. They write you back saying, I'm a friend of so-and-so, be my friend. And everybody just says, yes, 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 yes. And you open yourself up to all kinds of stuff. And so by the time I check out my friends, 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 you may get to a <laughs> website or a person's page, and they got profanity on their page, and they got all these crazy pictures on their page. And that's not your good Christian friend. That's their friend's friend's friend. Yeah. But now all of them are part of your trail. And so again, it takes me a long time to respond to people. So finally, I ended up getting off Facebook for a while. And I was like, you know what, this is just too much to keep up with. I yeah. really don't want that many yeah. people to know that much about me. I'm not posting that much information. So I just got back on about maybe a month ago. And when I got on in one week, I had 175 uh, messages. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It was overwhelming. I thought, I don't, I don't know you people. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but think about our young people. It's exciting. To be a 14 year old yeah. with 1,500 friends, and you're not that popular in school, but all of a sudden you know everybody, and everybody's sending you their photos and asking you for your photos and asking you for your information. And you have it no makes idea you where that's very going. vulnerable. Because now, think about it when you're on the street and somebody calls your name, what's the first thing you do is you look over your shoulder, hey. But now everybody knows your name. So you, can, you go online and you post all this personal information about yourself. My name is Sabrina, this is my age, this is where I live, this is where I go to school, oh this is where I go to word. church, here are all my friends. So now I run into you on the street and it's like, hey Sabrina, how you doing? Do I know you? Yeah, I'm a friend of so-and-so. You go to what's the name church, don't you? It just sounds so familiar. <laughs> but everything about you is right there. You're, oh. you're on the cheer team, right? Yeah, okay, our school was at your school last week. Not necessarily. But I know enough information about you to make me dangerous. Exactly. Our young people are vulnerable. And again, and the parents don't know their language. Can I ask just to go back mm -hmm. the dub, the F-I-W-I? F-I-W-I, I'm sorry, but what it's worth. But what it's worth. Yeah. Are there any like, notable cases of Facebook being used in, for trafficking purposes? Or, like, um, I say it could be, but... No. You know, I, I can't say for sure because I don't know any documented cases for okay. uh, trafficking, but I do know of a lot of different sites where people have met online and had bad things happen to them through Facebook. I don't, I don't know if those things were actually trafficking. But you'd have had some bad hookups, some bad relationships, and all kinds of things like that. Um, when you keep in mind things like Craigslist and Backpage yeah. and sites like that that are also yeah. online, yeah. they do the friends and, and anything that has chat rooms where you can go in and talk with people and get strangers talking to strangers mm -hmm. about God knows what. So um, I, I won't put that out on them, but it's not a good place for young people. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that they do have a criteria that says that you have to be at least 13 to be on Facebook, and that's in, in print somewhere. Uh, but you find that 9 and 10 year olds have Facebook pages. Because again, their friends all have Facebook pages. And if you're, under, if you're 13, 14, 15, again, nobody has given you an etiquette lesson on mm -hmm. what you should and shouldn't say, what you should and shouldn't post. And the reality of the internet is that it's permanent. You know, <laughs> it's not like you can take it down. Because by the time you've taken it down, it's been posted on 20 other sites. You know, it was really interesting, even for this conference, we had posted in a couple of different places, and we pulled up the conference, and it, we got hits everywhere. It's like, whoa, we didn't send it here, we didn't send it here. But somebody else had picked it up, somebody else had picked it up, and so once you post something, mm -hmm. it's just out there ad infinitum. And it's just like, whoa, I didn't mean to send it that many places. I mean, I don't know if you ever dialed a number and called the wrong number, or sent a text and sent it to the wrong person. Yeah. Well, think about that on the internet. 
Stuff is going all the wrong places to people you didn't intend to send it to. It. And they write back saying, hey, you want to be my friend? Because, <laughs> again, it's a friendly place. And so when you think about protecting our children, we need to ask the question, do parents or, or pastors or people or t teachers at school, do you know who their friends are really? And it's important that you know their friends. It says to know who all your friends are nowadays it can be challenging because everybody claims they have so many friends. But friends, again, don't cause you to compromise. The story after story in the news illustrates this very thing. Boy meets girl. Girl falls in love with boy. Boy convinces girl to have sex with him and his friends. And it's because he, you love me. Prove your love to me. If you really love me, you would do this. My thought is, what kind of foolishness is that? Mm -hmm. If you love me, why would you think I want to have sex with your friend? Or you? And so that's why we have to teach our young people, again, safeguards, because that, that is not the way that you show and approve your love. And it says, then you can earn a little extra cash, and before you know it, the girl is gone. It says, if she lives and gets away somehow, she usually tells these horrible stories about brutality and torturing and all these things, but why didn't we catch her before she got away? That's what we need to do. Ignorance is not bliss in these cases, and so we need to help our kids. So online dating. I know everybody thinks it's all the rage. And it used to be that when you talked about online dating, that it was, you know, these bad sites, and then all of a sudden it was the Christian dating sites. And it's like, okay, how are you telling that online dating is bad? But I got it off the Christian site. And there are multiple Christian sites. Again, I'm not going to call any names, but they're all out there. Most people know about them. But there are some warning signs that everybody needs to be aware of. First of all, I don't recommend online dating to anybody. It's a no-no. No, -no. no right. online dating mm -hmm. to anybody. Because I believe... And, and I believe that the Bible validates this, is that you need to have somebody that can be a character witness mm -hmm. for this individual. There needs to be somebody that can speak for the level of integrity of this person's name right. and their background. Somebody who has spent time mm -hmm. with them over seasons. Not a friend of theirs as a friend of theirs who mm -hmm. they met online too. They don't know exactly. those people. But somebody who's watched you grow up. Somebody who can talk about how you handle your mom and what do you do with your sisters and brothers and how are you in community. You want somebody who can vouch for that person, and you can't do that online. It's, it's these mixed matches that says we have all these things in common, so we're perfectly compatible, so we should get together. So what are some warning signs? They spot the traffic or while you're trying to find a special somebody can be hard, but you got to be able to ask some questions and, and watch for some signs. One is instant love. If you've been talking to somebody for two or three days and all of a sudden you're the person they've been looking for, you're the person they've been waiting for all their life, they're so in love with you, there's absolutely nobody else like you, they can't wait to get with you and be with you and see you in person and hug you and hold you, ding, 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 absolutely. flags should start waving and bells should go off, absolutely not, major warning sign, okay? Mm -hmm. And if this person is so perfect, how come somebody hasn't found them already? Yeah. You know? So again, major warning sign. Second side is job promises. You know, think about what's going on right now in our economy. People need a break, everybody's looking for a job, looking to go back to school or whatever they're looking for. You meet somebody online who says, Oh man, we have so much in common. I just got a job over here. I can get you a job too. Why don't you meet me here? Ding 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 ding. Jobs are not that easy to come by. And somebody that you just met is not ready to give you the only job they know about because they got probably got five friends who need jobs. So again, major sign. And then willingness to pay. Anybody who's willing to fly you somewhere to meet them is a red flag. Hmm. Why is it there no girls in town that you can't hook up with? Why do you have to fly somebody in? And you only know me two days, yeah. a week, a month, and you're willing to pay to fly me to come meet you? Now, one of the things that's interesting, when I was doing research on this whole online dating and trafficking bit, they said it's safer to maybe tell the person to come to you. And again, I say, ding, 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 no, no, right, no, no. Right. Don't come to me either, because now you're stepping into my environment. Mm -hmm. You know where I live. You know my community. You can watch me. Mm -hmm. It is not safe to hook up. Because mm -hmm. again, you put yourself in wrong position, especially when we talk about our young people who have no idea what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Music, you know, great music is inspirational, it's educational, it's relaxing. Music has lots of great advantages, but also the downside of it, because again, of all the sex, the violence, mm -hmm. and the drugs, just talked about the music, we know it plays a major role in socialization of our young people. So many of them are plugged in, you know, with the headphones, with the, the iPads, with the music on their phones. Everything is about the beat, everything is about the rhythm. You know, even when this, when it's this nice, mellow, smooth sound as opposed to the, all of this, it can still be the lyrics. So you got to pay attention right. to what the song is saying. What's the subliminal message that the person is walking away with? You know, it's, it's interesting. I remember, uh, I don't know where it was, but it was this little girl. She must have been about four or five years old. 
and it was some booty shake song, and she was just singing away. I was like, whoa, 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 that's not a four-year-old song. But she heard it on the radio, had a great beat, and had fun lyrics, and she knew every word. The little girl could barely talk, but she was singing every word of the song. And the words that she didn't have right, she had made up her own words and just kept on going. And I just thought, wow. You know, so here we have, she looks like this little adult, dressed up all cute, singing this little song, and just popping and rocking away. Mm -hmm. we got to be more careful about that. Research has shown that music has an effect on schoolwork, on social interaction, on mood and affect, and on your behavior. And so again, if behavior is changing, you may want to pay attention to what is the music mm -hmm. that young people is listening to. Because there's so much sex and drugs and violence in the music, a lot of times our young people don't see it anything wrong with it. They think it's harmless. It's fun. It's easy. And they have easy access. Just a question. How many of you have any kind of pill at home? Just any kind of pill. Okay. It may be an aspirin. It may be a pain pill from when you got your tooth pulled. It may be a pain pill from when you hurt your knee, you know, playing sports or any little thing like that. We all have medicine cabinets full of medicine. And most of it is old and outdated. Because one of the things that we do, as soon as we start feeling better, we stop taking the medicine. Even though it says, take completely, <laughs> we, we, we take three or four days worth of it, we feel better, we, we, we didn't want to have to take medication anyway, so we're glad to be feeling better, we put it up in the cabinet. And our cabinets are full of old medicine that we don't miss, because we haven't taken it in months anyway, so it's not like we know it's seven pills left in there. Right. It could be ten, seven, three, we don't remember. And our young people have access to it. It's, it's what they're hearing. It's what everybody's talking about. And it's money. And so they can get pills to other people. They can slip pills to somebody, especially if they're trying to have sex. So what, what do we do? We've got to be able to watch for behavior changes in our young people. And as, and as we kind of come to a close, a couple of key things we want to mention right away. You have the list here, but social withdrawal and isolation is a key thing. And this is not just the young person who's already normally quiet. This is the person who's normally outgoing, active, laughing and talking, who all of a sudden is beginning to withdraw. When you think about the lifestyle that this person lives, of torture, of sex, of degradation, of abuse, they don't want to have to be around people. They don't want to have to talk about it. They don't want people asking them questions. They don't want them to look into their eyes and see the pain that's there. And so they will begin to isolate and to withdraw, go to their room and close the door. And so if you have a young person whose behavior is changing drastically, those are one of the things that you want to watch for. Refusing to go to school and or skipping school, you have to ask the question as to why. There was a situation talking about online dating where a school in Indiana used uh, dating services as a fundraiser. And they've been doing it for the past 15 years. This was in a uh, paper a couple of months ago. They've been doing it for the past 15 years. And imagine 15 years ago, probably wasn't that big a deal. You know, kids fill out this cute little survey. You get matched up with somebody. And you pay money for how many matches you want to get. And they raise lots and lots of money. Well, parents are outraged about it at this point. Because an 11-year-old girl was matched up with a 16-year-old boy. Because they had things in common. And she was excited because she got this older guy, they met in the cafeteria, and he kissed her. And she went home telling her family and friends about she got kissed by this older boy. And her parents had fits, especially when they found out that she paid for the service online at school. And most of the parents knew absolutely nothing about it. But the school's been doing this for over 15 years as a fundraiser. It's so again, when you think about how our, how our society has changed, 15 years ago it might have been innocent, harmless fun, but not so oh, anymore. No. This little girl refused to go to school because of all the kids knowing about it. She was a laughing stock at school now because they had heard what happened. And she went overnight from being Miss Popular, got kissed by the older boy, to now she's getting talked about because she's a baby because her parents are making the big ruckus about it. They're trying to shut the program down. Mm -hmm. The money was being raised for the drama department. And now she's creating all this drama. <laughs> so yeah, changes, behavioral changes. Uh, demanding and selfish attitudes. When young people are being exposed to things beyond their limits, they get this sense of self-righteousness. Well, if I can do that, then I ought to be able to do this. And so watch for those kinds of changes. Disregarding for engaging in family functions, no desire to be around parents or siblings, uh, poor study skills, behavior, use of alcohol or drugs, that they're starting to steal things to give to somebody else, and to increase money or gadgets. You know, if you know you give your child 10 or $20 a week for allowance, there's no way they could be buying the, some of the things that they may have. And a friend is only going to buy you so much, and their parents are not sponsoring you and them. 
And so again, things the parents need to watch out for. Erratic, emotional, unstable behavior, disregard for rules and responsibilities, but a lot of things in terms of behavioral changes. Parents should know that your child's privacy may be important, but they don't have a right to it. You hear that? Privacy is important, but mm -hmm. their safety is more important. That's right. And so even though they have a door on their room, they can't close their door and lock their door if it's under your house and they're under 18. Amen. So at some point, you have the right to be in that room. And again, you don't want to be ruffling through all their stuff, but periodically they need to know that there will be a check, mm -hmm. that we are coming through. You know, so you want to give them a sense of privacy, but let them know that your, their safety is more important. It's important for parents to know that boys can be victims too, as you were saying earlier. The boys are just as vulnerable as little girls, especially when you have little boys that people are always saying, oh, he's so handsome, he's such a little gentleman, he's so cute, isn't he so nice? That's exactly what traffickers are saying and hoping that their giants will say as well, he's so cute. So they're victims. You need to keep your child busy. Keep them involved in something. They shouldn't have lots of idle time, time to just be sitting around the house where they can get into trouble. Uh, use child protective software. There is software out there that kind of blocks certain things out, mm -hmm. not only on the internet, but also on the cable channels. You know, I discovered all kind of really cool buttons. I have grandchildren, and when they come, I make sure I go back and check to make sure all my settings are still in place. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if the uh, certain language is used, if certain body parts are shown, you can block all that stuff off on Comcast. And I'm like, yay, yeah, all righty. Right. And they'll come and say, mm -hmm. Grandma, the channel doesn't work. They're not in this house. <laughs> Not while you're here at this. So, again, you got to watch for those kind of things, but you can also put blocks on the computer. They also have really cool software that tells you where you go on the system, and it's more than just the basic history searches that you can do, because even when you delete the history, there's software that can still show you where you go and where you've been. Then uh, there's a simple GPS device. Just like you have GPS on your phone so that you can know how to get where you're going, you can GPS your child. You know, kids are excited about getting to have telephones, but they don't realize you can know where their phone is at all times uh, uh, and know exactly where they are. And so good. parents need to keep track of their kids. You know, social networks are wonderful, but there are no safety tips unless parents share them. So here's some of the websites that are available. And you can uh, go online and look up any of these places. Some of them are free. Some of them have small fees. But the fee is worth it. It's worth paying for your child's safety so that somebody else doesn't pay for their service. Mm. Um, when you think about things like uh, the Web Watcher, the Spectre Computer, PC Pandora, Real Time Spy, you got the Net Nanny, just like you have the nanny to watch your kids, you got the nanny to watch the net, which is great. Um, you got Safe Eyes for certain things to see, E Blasters to spy agents, the Key Ghost, which I really love. Uh, when you think about the Key Ghost, it keeps track, it's like a shadow of every keystroke that you've made. And so even though you erase the history, the ghost is still there. And so you can actually go back and see where you've been. And remember, it's out there. So even though you've deleted it, somebody got it already. So reasons we don't speak. You know, we got this see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil policy. Uh, we believe we don't know enough about it to talk about it. You guys are armed and dangerous now. You know lots of information. You got lots of handouts. You have access to stuff on the web. Well, we feel like the sex industry is so well funded, we just can't do anything about it. Yeah. Well, if we don't do anything, it'll continue to grow and grow and grow. Mm -hmm. We've got to do something. Some of us don't want to sound like a prude. You know, we don't want to sound like an old fuddy duddy. You just old fashioned. You just don't want us to have any fun. Not that kind of fun. You're right. I don't. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're not ready for what might happen if we get involved. Yeah. You know, because I know once I get involved, I haven't been able to stop. I know too many little people. You know, and God forbid anything would happen to them because I decide to stay home and do nothing. Mm. And, and so I'm just compelled to have mm. to go out and talk to whoever I can, right. one at a time, ten at a time, a thousand at a time. Wherever there's an opportunity to talk about it, I want to start the conversation and right. keep it going. What happens if we don't speak? Uh, traffic will continue to provide the language, attitude, belief, and justification for its existence. They'll continue to go on. We we'll have a missed opportunity to proclaim a message of redemption and transformation be able to go in and help somebody. People will suffer in silence, not realizing the uh, grip that oppression has on them. And the lives of our most vulnerable will continue to be shaped by a culture of exploitation. So what can you do? Definitely you want to know the size, but also know the number. 888-3737-888. It's the national hotline. If you suspect anything, call. It's better that somebody check it out and you be wrong right. than to let somebody be trafficked right in plain sight. Keep the conversation going. Tell people about where you were this weekend. Talk about it. Have some small group meetings with some of your friends, family members, church members, classmates. But keep the conversation going. Become an advocate for those who are hidden or most vulnerable. Raise awareness. Educate. Campaign. Whatever you do, get involved. 
Don't keep silent and don't keep all the things that you've heard today to yourself. Yeah? Any questions? I know it's a lot of information. <laughs> Breathe deep. <laughs> I'm not sure what our time is and if we're in rotation at this point. But I have a little video clip here if we have time. Um, can I show you this here? Where are we here? Child trafficking and modern day slavery. Look how it does. It's so short. Stats and the numbers that Nikki talked about earlier. 